So far, my HS402 Pro oscilloscope builds have been using this PCB 2.0 board. And if I wanted to add Wi-Fi capability, I would do it by stacking these WROOM 30-pin boards with the use of that adapter PCB. Now I had stocked up on a lot of these components so that when PCB version 3.0 came around, I took a pass. Chris, a friend of ours on the Hscope Telegram group, sent me this PCB 3.0 and all of the components necessary to build it. Very generous and now it leaves me with no excuse to be able to feature this build on the channel. The biggest difference between V2.0 and V3.0 is this detachable board. It is meant for us to solder an ESP32W room chip directly to this board. In gadgets number 147 I showed you how you can 3D print these stencils and that I like the hot plate method to be able to populate these boards. The thing about the hot plate method is that it allows you to only do one side and you have to choose which side and then if there are components on the other side you have to use an alternate method such as a hot air uh, rework station or a soldering iron. I'm choosing to stencil the soldering paste to this half of the board and not this portion and use the hot plate method to do this small W room chip. Look at how tiny and closely spaced these pins are. Very easy to bridge. So wish me luck. I only have the one chip and the one board. I can't afford to screw up. I've applied soldering paste and with the soldering iron at 550 degrees Fahrenheit I've pre-tinned all of these pads. And I've applied a little bit of flux with a pen to help ensure that the solder that's on those pads will find their way to these pins. So I've got the temperature set to stop at 195 degrees C. Everything looks good. I'm going to shut this off. Let it cool down. That hot plate method came out near perfect and populated the back using the hot air rework station. Not only looks good, it also flashed easily. Hold the reset button as you plug in the USB and then follow the instructions laid out in gadgets number 138. Stencil and hot plate also made easy work of the main board. Unrelated to the hot plate method, I had not properly bridged this J1 which is necessary for an option one build which is what this is. That sent me to that troubleshooting sheet and then I finally figured it out. When these things work right off the bat it's very gratifying. When they don't it's very educational. PCB version 3.0 comes with three build options. Low noise, lower noise and lowest noise. As mentioned I did an option one build. So we bridge J1 and we populate U2. The noise level that I've achieved here with option one will outperform most commercial USB oscilloscopes. For all intents and purposes, for normal everyday use, there's nothing wrong with this. In the quest for excellence, Martin developed option two, which further cuts this already low noise by half and requires us to populate U5. Option 3 further tweaks it and requires us to populate U6. Both Option 2 and Option 3 require us to do a mod on the F411. That is well outlined with under the microscope detail in gadgets number 123. Our Wi-Fi board sits atop this header and a small strip of double adhesive tape can provide support. Add a lithium battery and a case and we've got ourselves a powerful Wi-Fi oscilloscope. So life is full of choices. We have PCB version 2.0 with its two options, PCB version 3.0 with its three options. Choose the one that you're most comfortable with and have a go at it. Take care guys, we'll talk to you soon.